Hello, everyone. I am Kelsey Lemon, Technical Marketing Manager for the Cloud Management Business Unit here at VMware. And I want to thank you for your interest in the Skyline service, which leverages proactive intelligence to help keep the environments that you manage out of harm's way. And joining me today is Nick Fritz, Senior Technical Marketing Manager, and he's going to be monitoring our Q&A pod and answering your questions. So make sure that you use that Q&A option at the bottom of the screen. And speaking of questions, we have a couple of questions that we'd like to ask you in order to facilitate today's discussion. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the polls here. So we've got a couple of questions here. You know, we'd like to know a couple of things in terms of your current level of support. Um, we'd like to know if you're currently using Skyline, of course, and if so, how many people are on your team? Uh, if you're currently a Skyline customer, we'd definitely like to know what your favorite feature is, and that's multiple choice. Uh, we'd also like to know if you've actually have acted on any of Skyline's proactive findings and recommendations. And if you're currently using Derealize Operations. And most importantly, we'd like to know what type of social media tools do you use? Because we would like to see how we could best connect with you. So thank you for getting that launched and um, feel free to participate in the polls so we can get this going. Let's see here. Got a couple of answers sort of popping up here. We're still letting people get in. So I'm gonna just give it another minute or two to sort of see. All right, the answers are starting to trickle in here. So I'm just gonna read off a couple here in real time. And so we've got um, a couple of customers here who are on basic and looks like right now we've got a majority of customers who are on production. Everything's updating here in real time. Um, wow, wow, we've got 72% of the customers out there currently using Skyline, which is great. We've got a lot of new features that we can give you guys an update on. Um, looks like we've got some pretty um, large size teams out there as well, but it looks like the vast majority are small teams around one to five. We're going to talk about ways where you can actually improve how you collaborate with those team members in terms of some of the new functionality that's um, currently available within Skyline. Um, my favorite question, um, Log Assist is running a close second behind upgrade recommendations. What's funny about this question is that we've done this poll a few times and while Log Assist is my favorite, upgrade recommendations seems to be edging out Log Assist every time. So that's really, really great that everyone's um, really leveraging that feature. We're gonna be talking about that. Um, it's great to see that people are actually putting Skyline to use. Um, 57% of the people are currently using the service and acting on those findings. Um, that's also great um, in terms of um, customers who are using um, the realized operations, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. So we're gonna be talking about how Skyline can actually enhance that workflow by talking about this whole notion around Skyline's unification of um, the support and the management experience. So we're gonna give you guys some insight on that as well. And it looks like everybody, the vast majority is on LinkedIn. And so that's really, really great to know. And with that, I am going to go ahead and end the poll here. And we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this. I'm gonna share the results so that everyone can see it. Give that a minute so everyone can consume all of this data. All right. And now with that, let's continue with the show. All right, and so, you know, with that, you know, I wanted to talk about our agenda for today. Um, we have something for everyone, you know, for our new customers, I'm gonna be highlighting Skyline's key capabilities and business value, as well as give an overview on how the technology itself works. And for our existing customers, which seems to be the majority of the audience here, you know, I'm going to be talking about, you know, the latest and the greatest in terms of new features and benefits. And then I'm going to actually go into um, a product demonstration that shows um, key capabilities and a few features in action before we close with next steps. And so with that, you know, let's talk about how Skyline is providing, 
you know, those tangible benefits for our customers and our partners. And so, as you know, you know, as a customer, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the traditional, you know, the reactive support scenario, right? Where you experience an issue in your environment, you open up an SR with VMware, and then our tech support team then troubleshoots and works with you to solve that issue. Well, VMware Skyline is actually the next step in that process. It's actually a proactive support technology, meaning that it can actually help you avoid issues before they happen. So you don't even have the problem in the first place. You know, and Skyline also helps resolve existing issues faster as well. So say, for example, you know, if you've opened a case with us, you know, our tech support engineers can use Skyline to view your environment specific configurations, and then they can use data-driven analytics to speed discovery and ultimately drive faster resolution times. And Skyline's, you know, automated detection and proactive, you know, that remediation guidance actually helps strengthen your environment. You know, with this service, you know, you can avoid um, IT downtime. And then you can then use or reallocate that time to do more valuable work. Um, but here's the best part, you know, Skyline is available at no additional cost um, with your active production or premier support contract. And it's also included with Success360. And I'm also very happy to say that Skyline is now available or now included within the Realized Operations Cloud as well. Um, and speaking of environment configurations, you know, Skyline recently started to support VMware Cloud Foundation 4.1 and higher. Um, as everyone here knows, you know, VCF is the industry's leading hybrid cloud platform, you know, and so with this new level of support, you know, Skyline will identify um, VCF management and workload domains and surface uh, VCF solution-based proactive findings. And of course, you know, there is um, existing support for vSphere, NXX, uh, vSAN, Horizon, as well as vRealize Operations Manager. And there is also a Skyline management pack for VROPS. And so if you install it, you know, you're going to see Skyline's proactive findings and recommendations within that client. And, you know, these capabilities, right, you know, they're really driving value to our customers. You know, we're hearing that Skyline are, is helping our customers, you know, avoid being in that constant firefighting mode. You know, they're talking about how they're reducing that costly downtime, which is often caused by misconfigurations. And, you know, that, Increased network reliability actually translates into less time fixing errors. And to date, you know, Skyline has helped um, our customers identify nearly 60 million objects in their environments with potential issues. And our customers have proactively, as you can see by the poll that we shared earlier, you know, the vast majority of our customers, at least 60% of them, are actually resolving a lot of these issues on their own. And when there are times, right, where you may need to actually react to an issue um, that wasn't proactively resolved, you know, Skyline can actually support you here as well through our log assist feature, which is actually 17 times faster um, than the manual upload and transfer process. And I'm going to be talking about log assist and showing that in action in our demo as well. Um, now, in terms of how this value translates to some of our specific customers, you know, I like to reference um, Rackspace. You know, they are a global leader in professional and managed services for public cloud infrastructures. And um, they serve more than half of the Fortune 100 across 120 countries. And last year, they deployed Skyline across six V centers and 4,000 VMs. And Richard Harris, who was one of their virtualization engineers, you know, he gave me a quote that I think really speaks um, to the heart of what keeps us all awake at night, which is basically, you know, we're being asked to do more with less. And he basically said that the intelligence that Skyline offers actually makes the service actually more than a tool, but actually another teammate that's constantly working so that he can focus on, again, on doing more valuable and more innovative work. And so, you know, if you haven't deployed Skyline, you know, you're probably wondering how the Skyline service works and how it actually provides that proactive intelligence. And so, you know, I'm going to be going into this in more detail in a demo, but at a high level, um, you basically you install and configure this lightweight appliance called the Skyline collector into your environment. 
And then once the collector is installed and configured to your endpoints, it actually listens to start collecting product usage data. And then based on this data, you know, Skyline performs a comprehensive analysis of your environment specific details. And then at that point, you know, Skyline acts to provide again those proactive findings and recommendations via a web based portal. And of course, you know, whenever I use that slide to highlight how Skyline and the collector specifically works, you know, I inevitably get questions around security. So let's talk about it. Um, the collector appliance is separate from the customer environment and data is um, transmitted by an encrypted channel and product usage. Um, that data is encrypted at rest. Um, all data is tagged with legally identifiable customer information. And one of the things that I want to point out is that no customer data is stored in the collector or shared with third parties without um, express partner approval. Um, Skyline is SOC 2 compliant. And again, data is encrypted in transit and at rest. And if you're an existing customer, you know, I want to talk about what's new. And so, um, and for those of you who aren't using, I'm sure you're going to find this discussion very beneficial here as well. So let's talk about some of the top new features. And so I'm going to kick it off by talking about a new feature that actually is actually one of our most requested customer features. Um, it's log assist with SR visibility. You know, in a previous update, you know, Skyline introduced entitlement account linking which gave admins the ability to view all SR submitted to the entitlement within the Skyline Advisor dashboard. Well, this update actually takes it a step further by giving admins the ability to act on their support requests within Log Assist, right? And so to activate this service, you know, within Skyline, all you have to do is just basically go to your settings. And then at that point, you can actually click on this little button here called View Support Requests um, within that settings tab and with it enabled, you know, you can actually submit log bundles on behalf of your extended team, as well as approve and reject log bundle requests. And from the VMware Skyline team, you know, we hope you'll agree that this updated workflow better reflects the collaborative way in which teams work when it comes to dealing with support requests. And then there's this notion around this new feature that we call um, the bulk import or the update feature, which actually makes it easier to add and configure multiple product endpoints to your Skyline collectors. You know, and I'm gonna be providing a, um, a day two deep dive of this feature in next month's webinar. But in a nutshell, this feature provides a significant productivity boost, right? You know, so to put this in context, you know, think about when you're adding endpoints to your collector, you know, rather than doing these tedious configuration tasks manually, you know, one by one, which consists of entering host names and passwords for all the products that Skyline monitors, this update gives you the ability to drag and drop a single CSV file that contains all of that information to automate that endpoint configuration. And, you know, customers have indicated that this is an ideal workflow for anyone who manages huge environments with multiple vCenters and products within their Skyline environments, um, as well as anyone basically who needs to update passwords due to security policies that require, you know, that those passwords be regularly rotated, right? Um, and then there's a new findings catalog. And this feature, you know, is basically what enables people, like I said, like Richard Harris earlier from Rackspace, you know, to sleep a little bit easier at night because this feature actually shows you all the potential vulnerabilities that Skyline is checking for and helping you proactively guard against. You know, and these findings are sortable by severity, by category, finding, and even date. So say, for example, you know, if you want to see all of the critical vulnerabilities uh, for security, for example, that Skyline checks for, you know, you can actually go to the findings catalog and you can identify them. And then you can actually go to your proactive findings tab um, to see if your environment is um, impacted by those same vulnerabilities. And basically, you know, with this knowledge, you can actually make more informed decisions on how you plan on remediating those issues. Um, and if you haven't been in the service for a while, you know, we've added, um, again, VMware Cloud 
Cloud Foundation and NSXT support, you know, which are two of the most requested products that customers have asked us to support. You know, so with Skyline's integration of VCF, you know, you can now view all VCF management and workload domains in your inventory, as well as review um, VCF specific findings and remediate them based on tailored recommendations specific to that. So as you can see here, I'm actually going in, I'm doing a filter and I'm looking at all the VCF specific findings and there's specific recommendations based on that. And when it comes to NXT support, you know, you can get NST um, specific findings and upgrade recommendations as well, as well as um, Skyline's integration of um, that feature within the log assist, which actually allows you to quickly deploy um, log bundles for your support requests. And finally, um, we've responded to um, customers who have asked for a way to integrate um, the support and management experience, right, by creating workflows between Skyline and Derealize operations. I saw a great uh, majority of you who participated in the poll um, indicated that you were using either Derealize operations cloud or the on-prem version. And so we support that with Derealize operations cloud. And so, you know, it's, like I said, it's been a top customer request. And, and now, you know, customers can be proactive and perform advanced troubleshooting in a single, you know, SaaS-based SaaS -based workflow, you know, via, again, you know, Skyline's integration within um, the Realize Operations Cloud. And so basically by weaving, right, you know, the data of these two products, you know, customers can now expand, you know, issue detection and avoidance, as well as self-serve to things that um, these two products cannot check for separately. And want to point out right now that um, if you're not taking advantage of this um, great integration, um, all Skyline customers um, are eligible for a free 30-day trial of the Realize Operations Cloud. And again, you know, if you want to see what this integrated and support management experience is like, um, be sure to be on the lookout for future webinar invitations, uh, most likely sometime this quarter, where I'm going to be showing the workflow between these two products in action in more detail. And finally, you know, before I close out on the new features and functionality, you know, as you saw, you know, a lot of great new features that are available for you to use. And many of those suggestions are coming directly, again, from customers like yourself. You know, we're definitely listening. And we've implemented an idea portal um, to capture your recommendations, right? And so if you have an idea that you'd like to see implemented in Skyline or any other VMware product offering for that matter, you know, you can actually go to this link where you can submit an idea, you know, you can vote on some of your favorite ideas and you can actually see what's planned or even being strongly considered for future implementation. You know, who knows, right? You know, one of your submissions could actually graduate from here and get actually implemented into the service itself. And how cool would that be, right? And so with that, um, let's take a look at Skyline in action. As you know, Skyline is a free service that is available for our production and premier subscription customers, as well as our Success360 customers. It's also included with vRealize Cloud Universal. And when you log into the advisor, you're initially greeted with this dashboard. And you can think of it as mission control, where as an IT manager or admin, you get everything that you expect to see at your fingertips. And so going from left to right, you'll see your account type, your ID, as well as a contract number for your organization. You will also see the collectors associated with your organization. And so in this small test error environment, you can see that I have several collectors in various states. And one thing that I want to point out about the collectors is that they're basically the brains of Skyline because the proactive intelligence that the service provides in the form of those findings and recommendations gets communicated through them. And if I were to expand one of my collectors, you'd see the architecture of my environment. You'd see how my endpoints are allocated across them as well. And these collectors have been given user-friendly names to help me easily identify where my collectors are deployed or how I intend on using them. And this actually leads me to another point around best practices for deploying Skyline collectors. You know, from an architecture point of view, deployment can be as simple or as complex as you like. 
You can have one collector for your entire organization, or you can have several. The flexibility is entirely yours. And the only recommendation that VMware makes from an architecture point of view is that if your environment has vCenter servers in multiple geographies, you should place a collector in the same region where that vCenter server is located. The dashboard also gives me an overview of my log assist usage, which is a very popular feature that I'm going to go through in more detail later in the demo, but at a high level, this feature does exactly what the name implies. It helps you create log bundles and attach them to support requests that our support team can help you resolve. My dashboard also gives me an overview of my findings and recommendations as well. And they're broken down by level of severity and category. And as I hover over each severity level, I get a tool tip. Critical findings show causes for data corruption, moderate findings impact usability, and trivial findings are recommended best practices. And you know, obviously being able to identify issues by the level of severity is a benefit that speaks for itself, but I also like how the advisor gives me the ability to see issues by category as well. And as you can see here, I have 117 issues being reported by Skyline and they fall under networking, security, compute, and storage categories, as well as end user compute and operation management. And what I like about the ability to see issues group by category is that it allows me to focus on the issues that matter most to me. For example, you know, if I know that my environment has a history of issues around storage, I can prioritize my proactive next steps based on the findings in advisor. And if you're wondering, the answer is yes. Um, these findings and these issues can be filtered by severity and category, giving me the ability to query and isolate the findings, again, that are most important to me. Then there's insight into the environment that Skyline is proactively monitoring as part of its operational overview. And this is where things get really interesting because it reflects all of the endpoints that Skyline has been made aware of during the configuration of the collector. And in this case, you know, Skyline is monitoring an environment that consists of multiple vCenters, hosts, and virtual machines, as well as connections to my vRealize Operations Manager, Horizon Connection Servers, and my NSX objects. And as an IT manager, I particularly like the operational overview because I can see what my collectors are monitoring. And when it's an exact match to what I know about my environment, you know, it actually increases my confidence in the proactive findings that Skyline recommends. And as you can see from the configuration summaries and pie charts here, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of data that provides great insight that will allow me to do my job more effectively. Finally, the dashboard allows you to see any open support requests that are associated with your organization so that you can track their status from end to end. You know, clicking on a support request number will allow you to track the history of all of your open and closed support requests. And you can sort the list by headings. You can apply filters to get specific results. And you can even export that list to Excel. And if you want further information, you can also review your support request details where you can ask for an uplift to severity. You can ask for the request to be closed, or you can ask for further manager assistance. And with that, now for the meat of the demo, proactive findings. And these are environment specific issues that could potentially disrupt your day-to-day -day business, and quite frankly, give you a lot of headache if you don't take action to address them. And it's important to note that I said environment specific because this is actually the value of Skyline, meaning that these findings aren't some generic rule of thumb or tip of the day recommendations that you as an IT manager already know about. You know, these findings are relevant to this specific environment and they can play a key role in informing the next steps in your risk management plan. And those next steps can be as simple as prioritizing those findings by using Skyline's filter tool. You know, with it, you know, you can attack potential issues in your environment based on severity, category, finding, or any combination of the different filter types, allowing you to focus on what's most relevant to you. 
So with that, you know, let's take a look at this first finding here. And as you can see, it's presented in an easy to read card format. And when I click on it, I can see a couple of things. I see a unique finding ID that can be used in discussions internally or with VMware Global Support Services. I see the level of severity. I see a description of the potential issue discovered within this environment, as well as an indication to the risk to this environment if the recommended action is not completed. I can also see a list of all the objects that could be impacted by this potential issue. And most importantly, I see a recommendation on how to resolve this potential issue, including hyperlinks to VMware knowledge base articles, security advisories, and other official VMware documentation. Now, this specific finding indicates that NTP is not configured on my ESXi host, which could impact the stability of my environment. Now, in addition to this, Skyline also provides additional information about my affected objects as well. And clicking on one of the hosts will show me a couple things. I can see the version number, I can see CPU and memory allocation. I can see CPU and memory usage, as well as hardware and virtual hardware information. So like I said before, there's a lot of information happening here. And earlier you heard me talk about Skyline's filtering capabilities. So let's take a look at that. I can apply filters based on specific criteria, again, such as severity, category, finding type, solution, and even when that potential issue was first observed. I can also use keyword searches to zero in on specific findings. And so here's one that I like to show, L1 terminal fault. And when I click on it, I can see that it's a moderate level finding that could potentially pose a security risk if action isn't taken. Now, in addition to adding filters to help me prioritize the findings that Skyline presents, I can also hide findings that aren't relevant as well. So let me demonstrate how to do that with the current finding that I have filtered. I'm going to click on the Select All button, then click Hide Findings, and then finally click OK. Now, the finding itself hasn't been deleted. I can still see it under my Hidden Findings option, and I can always unhide it in the future if it becomes a priority for me to resolve. And now for the really interesting part. You know, let's say, for example, you have a host that you're either using for testing purposes or it's in the process of being decommissioned. You can actually exclude findings from these objects by finding that particular object and turning off its visibility, thereby removing unwanted noise from the findings that aren't relevant to you. I should also point out that after I've customized my list of findings that are particularly relevant to me, I can export them for additional review or sent to other members of my team who may be the ones actually responsible for implementing the recommendations from Skyline Advisor. And this really cool feature is available for all Skyline customers. You know, the export is a CSV file that can actually be leveraged by other tools such as CLI tools to automate the remediation of these findings. Upgrade recommendations are available under findings and recommendations. And clicking on an upgrade recommendation actually displays all of the recommendations for your environment. And they're sorted by vCenter server. And if there are multiple upgrade recommendations, they are displayed in order of upgrade sequence. So in this example, the three EXXI hosts managed by this particular vCenter server has three upgrade recommendations, including the minimum build number of each version. So in this case, if I upgrade it to minimum build number 6.7U3, I would resolve 26 potential issues discovered by Skyline within my environment. But if I do decide to upgrade to a higher version than what is recommended, then the automatic product interoperability check will be invalidated. And speaking of interop, you may be asking yourself if performing the recommended upgrades will break connections to other VMware solutions. And I'm happy to say that Skyline automatically checks product interoperability for the upgrade recommendation. You know, clicking on show details next to the upgrade recommendation will actually display additional information, which includes product interoperability results. The product interoperability check will also alert you if another product is not interoperable 
with that upgrade recommendation. This way, you are made aware if another product needs to be upgraded first before performing the recommended upgrade. Now I'm going to move over to the findings catalog. And this feature answers the question, you know, what exactly does Skyline protect my environment against? And here you can see everything. And the findings are sortable by severity, category, finding, and even date. You can even do keyword searches to find something that's relevant to you. You know, once a customer asked me if Skyline monitored and reported certificate expirations, I simply did a keyword search and I was able to show them that Skyline does indeed monitor expirations for VROPS, NSX, Horizon, and even vSphere. And of course, all of the other filtering options do apply as well. So for example, if you want to see all the critical vulnerabilities for security that Skyline checks for, you can go to the findings catalog identify them, and then you can go to your active findings tab to see if your environment is impacted by those same vulnerabilities. And if you're currently using Skyline, I encourage you to check this feature out. And if you want to see other findings and recommendations that aren't appearing in the catalog, let us know. Our findings catalog is constantly expanding. Now I'm going to move over to operational summary reports or OSRs. And I should note that OSRs are only available to our premier service customers. And OSRs contain advanced findings and recommendations that come in two types of reports. The standard report is automatically generated every two weeks, and it's basically a snapshot of all the proactive findings that Skyline recommends. And it comes in two downloadable versions. There's a Word document that gives a listing of the findings and a zip file that includes the Word document of the findings as well as a CSV file that identifies all of the affected objects. And right underneath that are the custom reports, and they are created at your request by a support account manager that gets assigned to you as part of your premier support subscription benefit. So for example, if you want to see all of these CPU vulnerabilities that are flagged by Skyline, your support account manager can generate it for you, and it's going to appear right here. Now, what I like about OSR is that they are ideal for communicating up or for facilitating those C-level briefings on the health of the environment that I'm managing, as well as my recommendations on either improving or maintaining that health. And with that, I'm going to pause right here because I'm going to shift the conversation a bit. You know, up until this point, I've been talking about Skyline's proactive and self-service capabilities to keep the environments that you manage out of harm's way. But there may be times when you will need to react to an issue that is disrupting the environments that you manage, and our support team is here to help. And Skyline can also facilitate your interaction with our support team and even speed up total time to resolution. And this is where the Log Assist feature comes into play. You know, after you've submitted a support request, Skyline Log Assist streamlines the process of manually gathering and uploading those log bundles that our TSEs will need to help troubleshoot your issue. Since the SR has already been opened, I can select it and I can attach a log bundle by initiating a log transfer. And at that point, I'm done. In less than two minutes, I've created a log bundle and I've sent it to support. You may have heard us mention on several occasions that customers are reporting a 30 to 40% time savings when creating log bundles, and this is how they're doing it. And with this being done, I can actually go back to more meaningful work now. And if I want to save myself even more time, I can even let VMware's TSEs create the log bundle for me with its log transfer request feature. I have the option to approve or deny the request, and there's even an option to auto approve requests from our TSE team. And to keep tabs on the status of your SRs as well as the associated log bundle transfers, you can see that here in the log library. Here you can see who initiated the transfer, whether it was by you or by VMware, and you can also see when it was done. Now, before I end my overview demo, I want to point out two other cool features within Skyline. The first one is customizable email notifications. You know, you can modify settings to alert you when new findings become available, when log requests have been made, 
when collector passwords are about to expire. You can even see when new features and critical findings are available. And if you're a Premier Support customer, you can also see when those OSRs are available as well. And what's really great about this great feature is that if you're a member of multiple organizations that's leveraging Skyline, you can actually customize the amount of information that's coming to your inbox. Now, the second feature is increased SR visibility for Skyline admins. You know, earlier in the demo, I showed how Skyline admins have greater visibility into the status of their team support requests via the dashboard. Now, to activate this functionality, simply toggle the view support request raised by team members option in the Skyline Advisor settings tab. And with it enabled, you can submit log bundles on behalf of your extended team, as well as approve and reject log bundle requests. And if you have multiple entitlement accounts, you can link them, giving you a centralized location to monitor your team's interaction with our support request team, as well as track the status of their support requests. And with that, you know, before I conclude, you know, today's webinar, just wanted to talk about some next steps in terms of how you can get started by using Skyline today. You know, all you have to do is just go to the Getting Started link on this page and you can install Skyline. Um, you can even try Skyline in a um, hands-on lab environment as well, a sandbox, if you will. So you can actually see that service in action. Um, you can also visit some of the other URLs visited, um, listed here for additional information, including, um, you know, frequently asked questions. Uh, we also have a moderated um, community. And so if you have questions, you know, you can actually go there and um, get all your technical questions answered. Um, so we encourage you all to visit, you know, that community and check it out. And then, um, and speaking of communities, um, be sure to check out our new Skyline um, channel on YouTube, where you can search through our video library that's constantly expanding on the latest product information. You can get industry insights, you can get access to some how-to guides, and even um, see um, on-demand webinars like the one that's happening right here today. And with that, I want to say thank you. And um, Nick, my friend, I'm sure you've been very busy with questions. How are we doing over there? Hey, Kelsey, we're doing all right. Um, do have one question here that I started to type, but I'll go ahead and answer live. <laughs> uh, just to save my, my fingers here that are smoking. Um, it was the question regarding, and I think I've seen this one, this one came up earlier in the presentation as well, regarding OEM support, um, in particular for VxRail, and if they can adopt Skyline. Uh, so the, the answer to that question um, is, Skyline requires a support entitlement with VMware. Uh, we do not support, um, Skyline does not support um, entitlements with OEM providers um, such as Dell or HP are, are some of the most common. Um, all we require uh, with regards to, okay, if we wanna acquire a support entitlement with VMware, you know, what product do we need to acquire? Uh, really, it doesn't matter, you know, a single vCenter server and, and ESXi host, um, all that we're looking for from a Skyline perspective is uh, a support entitlement with production tied to your my vmware account um, any support entitlement um, again at production premier uh, success 360 or vrise cloud universal um, we check your my vmware account not any product specific um, and once skyline sees that your my vmware account that you're logged in with has again any support entitlement with vmware you can proceed with installing skyline so we're not we're not picky from that perspective we just need a production support entitlement again at a minimum. Yeah, I can see why you chose to speak that out as opposed to typing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. And um, with that, hey, you yeah. know, Kelsey, Kelsey and Nick, one more question was just entered in chat about Dell server integration. Do you want to pick that up before we sign off? Asking if there's any prerequisite required to get it set up apart from vCenter. Yeah, uh, I can answer that real quick. Uh, the only requirement is uh, Skyline will only detect that for Dell 12G or newer hardware. Um, so that is the only Dell server requirement uh, to integrate Dell EMC Support Assist Enterprise. 
with Skyline um, is that the, the hardware for a detection perspective for, for Skyline is again, that 12G or, or newer hardware. Thanks a lot for that, Nick. An incredibly efficient webinar yet again. I wanna thank everyone for their participation. Um, be sure to check out for future webinars and um, definitely go to our YouTube channel to see a lot of functionality in action. And um, with that, we're gonna give you all about 300 seconds back. Have a great day, everyone.